It's interesting to see the Home Depot uh, not recommending concrete. That's actually where we purchase our concrete. This is a subject of constant debate. So these guys are obviously compressing gravel around the post. So the theory is it will hold it tight, but yet still drain. And heavy clay, I mean, I you think you could probably make the argument that it'll turn that into a cup. The clay typically doesn't drain well. I don't know. I don't think crush stone dust with with rock so rock with fines is going to drain hardly at all today's video is brought to you by our good friends over at nationwide industries the fence pros number one choice and they are this fence pros number one choice for a couple reasons one we love using their keystone traverse latches they're easy to install you simply bolt them onto the post no drilling for rods or cutting the rods required it's a pretty straightforward installation process. We also love using their full line of galvanized hardware. It shows up quickly and reliably. All right, guys, today's video is titled How to Repair a Fence from the Home Depot with this old house. A couple names that I think are pretty familiar to most everybody. Excited to see how the Home Depot suggests repairing a fence. Want to watch the video without my commentary? Well, we'll include a link in the description below. Most fences don't require regular maintenance, but over time, strong winds, rot, and everyday wear and tear can cause damage. If you notice your fence gate is sagging or the fence itself is leaning, inspect the damage. You know, thinking about that, I don't know, I don't know how accurate that statement is that most fences don't require regular maintenance. I mean, you could ask yourself, what is regular maintenance? Could it be an annual cleaning or could it be just like a gate adjustment? I would say most fences require some regular maintenance. I mean, even vinyl fences, which like to tout themselves as being maintenance free, I still, they grow organic growth, right? You see a lot of, at least here in the Midwest, we see a lot of organic growth, mold and algae on the north facing face of a vinyl fence. They require a little bit of cleaning once every few years, but um, I think that's a common misconception that people just don't maintain their fences and then they end up needing repair. Post rod or the two by fours rod, that sort of thing. So the wood fence behind her has obviously not been stained or treated in any way. So it stands to reason that it probably does need a little bit of maintenance. And if it's limited to one section, you just might be able to fix it instead of replacing the entire fence. You know, with the exception of storm damage or something like that. If we're talking about rot, if the fence was installed at the same time, uh, generally it's a pretty good indication that uh, the rest of the fence is getting ready to go. If there's rot in one post, it stands to reason there's going to be rot in the other post. You might end up just chasing this problem all the way around your fence. The most common repair on a wooden fence is replacing a rotten post. Yeah, I would I would say the vast majority of replacing replacing wooden fences is due to rot, typically at the post at ground level. Uh, occasionally, we'll see two by fours that are really old. So this fence actually looks pretty old, but you see two by fours start to rot out. Uh, I would say the lion's share of repairs and replacement on wood fences is due to rot at the post at ground level. You got a little sway in your wow, fence. Wow, that is a lot of play. So something is going on down beneath. Right, I bet ten to one. You ready? Go. Over time, moisture and insects can damage the post at ground level, causing the whole fence no to wobble. Concrete. That's not good. We got to replace that post. Start the repair by purchasing a new post. So this is interesting. So this would be probably up in the northeast uh, is where I, I predominantly see fences like this with the dowels, round dowels and a privacy fence. Uh, I could be wrong. This could be somewhere else. I tend to see more fences like this, like I said, with dowels and the rails up in the northeast. Slide two by fours under each fence panel to give it something to rest on when it's taken apart. Okay, have you all ready? Yep. We're gonna do it. Just take a slide the whole section out, bring it out. Oh, how bad was that, huh? Remove the entire post. Coming. There you go. If only posts were that easy to remove, uh, how nice would the job be, huh? Let's grab the buckets of gravel and put them around the post. It's interesting to see the Home Depot uh, not recommending concrete. That's actually where we purchase our concrete. Quick side note, how weird is it, I guess, that we've approached Quick Crete, the concrete supplier, directly about buying truckloads of concrete. But uh, Home Depot always seems to be cheaper than buying it directly from Quick Crete. And Quick Crete delivers it. So I don't know. But like I said, it's interesting to see Home Depot not suggesting uh, concrete. Set the post in gravel, which drains well so it won't trap moisture against the post. Why don't you leave in the comments below, how would you set this post? This is a 
subject of constant debate. So these guys are obviously compressing gravel around the post. So the theory is it will hold it tight, but yet still drain. And heavy clay, I mean, I you think you could probably make the argument that it'll turn that into a cup. The clay typically doesn't drain well. And so by putting gravel around the post, you're really just creating a void there to collect water. We would prefer to use concrete. Some people prefer to use the foam product. If you watch the channel at all, you've probably seen a video or a couple videos we've done about the post foam. Even in those videos, there's some people in the comments that uh, think that's the right way to set a post. Anyway, how would you go about setting this post? Let me know. All right, Kev, that should be good. Now we're gonna use some graded base and we're gonna pack that around the post and that's really gonna hold it in place. Pour it right in. Kevin, this mixture of three quarter stone and stone dust is gonna drain, but it's really gonna hold the post in place. I don't... <clears throat> I don't know that that's accurate. So stone with fines or what he's calling stone dust. Once it's compacted like that, I it doesn't drain. I mean, it turns, it gets pretty solid. I mean, we use it on our lot out here, This the portions that aren't concreted. I don't know. I don't think crushed stone dust with, with rock. So rock with fines is gonna drain hardly at all. If you have loose sandy soil, or if the post is supporting a fence gate, you may need to set the post in concrete. Well, there you go. Then just screw the rails into the new posts. And if you want to grow grass, you can fill the top six inches of the hole with loam. Here's the thing. So the majority of the rod is going to occur within the first several inches of the ground level, the aerobic zone. It's where all the microbes and insects and everything in the ground typically live, which is why you see rot there. You see these microorganisms attacking the wood to get the fiber out or get whatever they're after out. So regardless of how you set this, this seems to be setting this post up for failure right off the bat by having it touch the ground at that aerobic zone. Replacing a few posts or fence panels is a lot cheaper than installing a whole new fence. So see, this is what I'm saying though. So if there's just one post, I suppose it is cheaper. Now, if you hire a contractor, typically there are minimums. So by grouping posts together, you can typically save on a per post basis. It stands to reason if two or three of the posts are rotted out of 20, 10% or so of the posts are rotted, there's a good chance the rest of them are gonna rot over time. You'll actually end up spending more money on this fence than you would replacing it over time if you replaced it a little bit at a time. Now, the opposite side of that argument I completely understand is houses run on a budget. Mine does as well. So I understand if the budget doesn't cover replacing the whole fence, but I think saying that it's cheaper to repair it over time rather than replace it when needed might be a little bit misleading. Well guys, let me know what you think about this video. Repair the fence, replace the fence. How would you handle it? And when setting a post, and I understand this is opening up the comment sections for a fair amount of debate, but when setting the post, how would you set it? Clean rock, rock with fines, concrete, sand I've seen. Um, tamping the dirt back in post foam how would you do it let me know in the comments below for now i'm joe everest the fence expert reminding you that good fences make good neighbors and i'll see you next time